What's going on, everybody? Toro Friday here with another installment of the DSC series. Today, we have Miss Karen Doe from State University of New York at Stony Brook School of Dental Medicine. Uh, she's, she'll be joining us today. How you doing, Karen? I'm good. How are you, Tyrell? Doing well, doing well. Thanks for asking. You know, keep doing our best we can uh, during, during these wild times, but um, it, it's, it's been good. It's been good. So how is everything on your end? Um, it's been different. It's been a yeah. wild ride. <laughs> First year, it's the COVID-19. So here I am at home. <laughs> <laughs> definitely, definitely. I know it's a little rough, but, but we're going to make it again. But uh, if you could, you know, just, I guess, give everybody else um, viewing a brief introduction to yourself, you know, where you're from, where you went to undergrad, as well as uh, a little bit about your journey. You know, if you took any time in between undergrad and dental school, what you did. Okay, so hi everyone, my name is Karen Doe and I'm a first year at Stony Brook School of Dental Medicine and I graduated from the University of Michigan in 2015, go blue. And I know that seems like a, like five years from now, so I took quite a few time, like gap years um, to figure out that I want to do dentistry. Um, what I actually majored in in undergrad was art and design and communications wow. and media studies. So. Um, my path is a little non-traditional, a little bit different, and um, it took me some years. I had to go back to school to do a post back to basically take the science courses to yeah. apply to dental school. So I did a huge career change um, midway, and um, here I am. <laughs> <laughs> Got you. Where'd you, uh, where'd you do your post back? I actually did it at Stony Brook. Okay, so. cool. I didn't know they had a post back uh, program there, so that's something good to uh, to look into. But um, for yeah. everyone out there to look into. Um, but you know, the first question we're gonna jump into it. Uh, a lot of pre-dents out there, they're dying to you know get through, get past the DAT. So, what is your number one tip that you could provide for anyone out there who is you know looking to do well in the DAT? Um, so for me, I did the DAT boot camp and the destroyer. I feel like those are two very popular choices. I've also experimented and cracked the dad and I've tried to like look through different sources and found which one fit best for me. Mm -hmm. Um, I thought boot camp was it kept me on a schedule and I like that it was very, you know, like it set it up like the real DAT okay. and then the destroyer was very challenging, but I thought that it really helped in certain subjects like math and biology. They give out this free PDF, which was really awesome and helpful. Um, but in terms of studying, like I probably prepared overall five months, but the first wow. two months were more of a, you know, dive into different resources and see which one I liked. And then the last three were very intense. And my biggest advice would just be, you know, when you, when you start studying, just really stick to it and make a routine because you want to be in that habit of the timing and what you're looking at for the PET and certain things. So just stick to that routine and don't fall out of it and just go straight into the DAT and you'll kill it. For sure, for sure. And you took your DAT, um, you know, I guess while you were preparing for your post or while you're doing your post back or in between that time, like when did you, how did you uh, choose when you wanted to take it? <laughs> Sorry, my timeline's so crazy. So, yeah. so I did actually a first, I did one year gap year after graduation. And in that time I was working in fashion because that's what I wanted to do. Mm -hmm. And then I decided I didn't want to do fashion. So I did a two year post back. And while I was taking my classes, I think towards the end, I was maybe the last semester in, I was taking physics and biochemistry not okay. classes. So I started in the December break and, you know, just getting that month off with nothing to do. And, you know, I think that's when I took it. Yeah, I took it around February or March or something. I can't really remember. <laughs> but yeah, it was, it was around that time when it was getting warmer out. Okay, gotcha, you, gotcha, you, gotcha. You. Okay, so um, for Stony Brook, in, Stony Brook in particular, do you guys have any type of, um, you know, enrichment programs or type of events for any pre dental students, uh, prospective students looking uh, at Stony Brook? Yes, actually, we have the best one, which I did and I participated in. It was so much fun. It's called yeah. Discover Dental DDS. Um, you guys should all check it out. It's online. And I think they take about 60 applicants or so um, every single summer. And you basically have a week where you're just like in the pre clinic working with drilling, you do amalgam composite. Um, 
doing ortho and root canals and then waxing. And I think it's so enriching because for the first time you get to feel what, it, what it's like to be in that chair. Mm -hmm. And rather than just shadowing and looking and picturing yourself, you're actually really doing it. So that's like really reassuring to know. And when I did it, I was like, okay, I'm definitely going into dentistry. Like this is it. That was and it. <laughs> also that program is so amazing because you get to hang out with all the students mm -hmm. that are currently there and all the faculty, which I think is a kind of a small plug into the school. So you get to be there and then you get to get it. <laughs> there we so. go. There we go. <laughs> awesome. So that's, that sounds good. And then of course, you know, you said you did the post back as well, which I'm sure played a, a big part in, uh, in you getting in as well, or, or, you know, getting accepted. I think so. Huh? I, I intentionally picked my post back that was linked to a dental school. So I was hoping, you know, to get my- yeah, so that, That's a good word of advice for anybody out there is like, look for programs that kind of have a pipeline relationship with right. certain dental schools, especially if you want to go to a particular dental school. So right. definitely a good tip there. Um, so once you, you know, you, you build your resume, uh, you got your application all together and everything, how many schools did you actually end up sending your application out to? Oh my gosh. Do you remember? I think, I think I panicked and I did like 13 or 15. Oh wow, okay. <laughs> I, I just didn't know what to expect. And right. so I did that and I like regretted it because I'm like, why did I spend so much money applying all these schools I would never actually fly out to? It's too far. But you know, better safe than be sorry. Yeah, that's real. So we see it worked out. So how was your uh, your interview at Stony Brook? You know, how was your experience through that? And people walked us through how that day was for you. So my Stony Brook interview, I was like hoping to prep for that interview and like make it my special one, but it ended up being one of my first ones. Oh, so man. I didn't get to prep my interview, <laughs> but it was so relaxing because I just finished summer DDS like maybe yep. a month or two before. Yep. And then in just, I came in in September and I saw so many familiar faces and it was only like five people and everyone was so nice and we were all just on the same page. No one had that much experience in the interview trail yet. So it was really nice to like meet people and connect. And um, so when you first walk in, you sit awkwardly like in the waiting room, just like a patient and you like spot out the people that are also wearing suits and you're like, okay, they're probably interviewing too. I'll go sit with them. And then, um, Victoria Guillen, who's actually working part of the mission, she came out and she was like, oh, come with me. And we all sat through, sat in a conference table and just got a little financial aid background, a little background about the school from Patricia Berry. And she's the admissions director. Okay. And then after, I think we split up into, no, what we did was that we um, got to shadow in the clinic. Oh, wow. like some fourth years and faculty and we got to just like talk to them and it was really really chill one interview day like mm -hmm. one actual day you got to the shadow no it was maybe like 30 minutes but okay. you know just to check it out and not just yeah. like walk through the halls because that's really meaningless but right. like actually just standing there and seeing like oh what are these students doing like how do they hang out and like what are they like? Are they weird? Or like, are they funny? Or you know, you get to like see them interact with patients and it's really cool. Yeah. Just like shadowing there. And then we had lunch with D3s, which was really nice. And then for interview part, we had two, uh, we started off with one interview with a fourth year and they, it wasn't a real interview. It was more of like a a little pep talk like hey you can do this like calm down like tell me a little about yourself just like you know prepping to get to the real interview part and then we split off into groups and then I went off with a faculty member and I remember this the first interview was very like question answer so she would look at my application and be like tell me about this okay tell me about this tell me about this and there was no real conversation so I was like okay, okay I'll just answer and then the second part I had another faculty member but it was more of a conversation, which was so nice. And it was very easy, but he wasn't actually dental faculty. Like he didn't have a DDS, he was doing okay. more research. So I think one key advice is like, just be ready to have questions for these people who aren't all dentists mm -hmm. or all researchers, cause they may do something different. They may all have a role in the school. Yeah. You don't want to ask like a dental or clinic related question to a researcher cause he may not have any clue. So yeah, just like come ready with who you're going to talk to and just have fun with it. Okay, sure, sure. 
So now, you know, actually, after you finish getting through your interviews, you know, you get the acceptance to Stony Brook, you realize you're going there, you show up to campus, you know, you're, you're happy to finally be a first year. How was it? <laughs> so happy, right? So how was it that first year, you know, transitioning? You have a little different, you know, situation being there already for classes, but how was it, you know, actually transitioning to the dental curriculum? How was that kind of laid out? And then how are you guys transitioning to clinic? Um, so for me, transitioning from my post back into dental school first year was, it wasn't as bad because I guess I was just really ready to start and I yeah. really wanted to do well and yeah. I tried really hard and every day I was like, I'm going to do this. I'm going to grind and never give up. And it was a little challenging because the first two blocks was in medical school. So mm -hmm. we're often with medical students who are also M1s and we take the same exams, national board, like medical exams. Mm -hmm. So oftentimes we would be like, oh, why do we have to do the same things as them? Like we're <laughs> dental students. And it would feel discouraging, but at the same time, you're like, wow, I can do the same things as them and learn the same things and we're capable. And so that was a kind of a good ease because we started off with anatomy and biochem, just two classes, and they like staggered the schedule so that we never overlapping exams and it was so nice. And then you move on to the second block of med school. And then now we're in the third block, which is finally in dental school. <laughs> we had two weeks and then it got called off because of the COVID, unfortunately, but the schedule ramped up like crazy. We maybe have class, like triple the amount of classes now, but you know, it's, I think it's just being flexible and just being ready to take on everything. And I love what we're learning in terms of dentistry, even though it's a lot, it's just so much more manageable because I love it. Yep, it's, it's, it's the real stuff you're going to actually be getting into when you when you get in the clinic and everything. So, so right. it's a lot more, I guess, fun or applicable to, to learn. Mm -hmm. um, so how are you guys transitioning into, you know, the pre-clin and the clinical aspect? Do you guys get jump right into waxing up or you guys start drilling early? Like how, how are you guys introduced to that? Um, so first year, the first block, we did dental morphology and occlusion, which is the waxing. And that was probably the most that we got for pre-clinical um, because our biomedical um, is very strong. So we were in the medical school for most of first year. Right. Um, in that way, I feel like we come out very strong for like when we take the board exams. Okay. And also for preclinical, we may seem like we're behind because I know a lot of schools are already getting on the drilling and all that stuff. And we were supposed to start, you know, and right. when we got to dental school, we can't anymore. Um, but our requirements are super high. And as soon as we go back, they're going to cram operative one and two together and we're going to be <laughs> on ham and all these things. So our school makes sure that um, with any adjustments that they've made because of this special circumstance that we're still doing way more than the requirements that right. most schools do. So I, I feel pretty well prepared at the end of the day. I'm not too worried. That's good. That's good. So uh, we have a few more questions here um, as we start to wrap up the interview and everything. But um, so the next question is, and I know you, it might be kind of awkward because you only have your one during the school experience, but I want you to kind of tell me what you feel like has been something unique to your dental school experience at Stony Brook. Um, I feel like everyone says this about Stony Brook, but it's the class size. We're okay. so small and it's amazing. And I came from a very big school. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I went even at Michigan, I felt like it wasn't even that big, but it was huge. Okay. And so <laughs> for me to go to Stony Brook and still love it, I get almost all the attention I need. Um, you know, any faculty members always there for me. They know you by name, by face. And it's like for four years, you go straight like that. And it's like family. And even with your classmates, you would almost think like, oh my gosh, another 46 for the rest of four years. I have to see them every day for eight hours. It's so bad. But it's so fun. I look forward to seeing them every single day. And you know, there's so many different personalities. So you know, you just like we're all in this together, so mm -hmm. we're not really like gonna hate each other in that way. We're we're always just riding in and out. We're all chill. We eat lunch with different people and explore different things. Sign up for clubs for different things, and it's so much fun. So, class size is definitely probably the best part about Sony Brook, and you know, you get everything you need from day one to the day that you're out the door. Okay. Nice, nice, nice. Okay, so the last question as we wrap up is going to be if you could go back now. Uh, go back in time and tell the younger version of yourself while you were still applying to school and 
you know, fighting through that whole process. Um, if you could tell us that version of yourself, any advice, what would it be? Oh, let's see. I think it's a balance of being disciplined okay. and also being really flexible because a lot of what I'm going through and what a lot of students are going through, it's not like the same, like, oh, if you just work really hard and do like <laughs> read all the textbooks, like you're going to do well, but you have to be ready to just adapt and you know, different professors are gonna ask for different things and different professors are gonna see, like look out for different things in terms of grading and how they present things and exams yeah. and how you talk to them. So I would just be not too rigid, but also be really disciplined. Like you wanna have a routine and you also wanna not give up on the things that you really love and just like really dig at home now, make it a habit, go to the gym now and go every single day, it doesn't matter how tired you are, if that's like your thing, you have to stick to it and don't give that up because I feel like for me, that's my thing and no matter how tiring my day is, I will always make sure I do it. And like everyone needs that outlet. So like build your good habits now. <laughs> That's nice, nice. That's perfect. That's perfect. Couldn't say it any better myself. Uh, but Karen, definitely want to say thank you. You know, that's going to wrap up the interview for today. I want to say thank you on behalf of myself, Tyler Future DDS, and all the viewers out there who have been tuning in and getting all this good advice and words of wisdom from you. Thank you so much for having me. Good luck, guys. This is going to yeah. be awesome. No problem. Trust definitely. the process. You got to trust the process. Trust the process. Because, man, that's perfect. That's a great gem right there. <laughs> so if you could, you know, if anybody out there has any questions for you um, about your journey or maybe about Stony Brook, want to pick your brain a little bit, uh, I guess could you give your Instagram so they can reach out to you and send you a DM or something? Yeah, my Instagram is that's dope. It's my last name's Doe, so D O H P E. So um, you can come find me. It's not like a dental Instagram, but I'm so open to DMs, questions. You can hit me up or we can follow each other and keep track of each other see what you're up to got you sounds good so we'll make sure we put that down in the description uh box but again thank you uh for taking some time out you know during COVID-19 so we have a little extra time but thanks for, thanks for sitting down with us and, and, and talking with us thanks um, stay safe now, for everyone else out there if you haven't already make sure you hit the subscribe button the like button and the notification bell so you know whenever we post up new content um and that's gonna be it well if you guys have any questions for myself or Tyler head over to Instagram follow us at underscore future DDS Send us a DM there. We'll be able to get back to you as soon as we can. Uh, that's going to be wrapping it up. Um, see you guys.